So this moment, Israel is also under a lot of pressure as it is getting ready for a ground incursion into the Gaza Strip. The Israeli military has admitted that there was a monumental intelligence failure on their part, which is what resulted in the attack by the Hamas fighters on the 7th of October. And the person who's facing the heat on this front is the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who's finally being criticized for having been caught off guard. And civilians across the state of Israel are demanding answers from him. Now, the people of Israel are asking questions of their Prime Minister. They want nothing but his scalp. They say that Netanyahu must resign on moral grounds at least, because this is the worst attack that any Palestinian faction has inflicted on the State of Israel ever since the State of Israel came into existence over seven decades ago. Demonstrations are being held outside the res residence of the Defence Ministry in Tel Aviv. The protests were started by just one person whose family has been taken captive by the Hamas fighters. But soon these protests have expanded significantly and not without reason. People across the capital city of Tel Aviv are now calling for the state of Israel to bring back its captives from Hamas's captivity. As the barrage of rockets has triggered sirens across Israeli cities, the shelling is also fueling the already aggrieved anger amongst the Israeli citizens who are furious that Benjamin Netanyahu let them down and how. The earlier two Israeli ministers, remember, who were visiting a hospital, were heckled and were then forced to leave. The environment minister was in a hospital in the central part of Israel where she was confronted by a visitor and the staff. One of the visitors was heard saying to the official, you have ruined this country, get out of here. A hospital worker in green scrubs then said, how are you not ashamed of having started another war? In another instance, the transport minister was paraded out of a hospital in Tel Aviv, even with security officials being present. One of the hecklers threw what appeared to be some kind of white paint at the minister's car. So this is the manner in which the people across Israel are demanding and asking questions of their leadership. At the Sheba Medical Center in Tel Aviv, the finance minister was challenged by the family member of some of the victims. He was asked, can't you see what is happening to us? That the anger amongst the Israeli people is palpable and many say that this is justified. And Israel's Defense Forces chief has released his first public statement. Six days after the war began, he finally admitted to a monumental lapse in the military intelligence that enabled Hamas's infiltration and also then went on to state that everything will be done to bring back the hostages. But the truth is, this intel failure has put the people of Israel in a huge bit of a dilemma. They simply do not know whether to blame Netanyahu for the intelligence failure or to rally behind him in his war. Some of Netanyahu's harshest critics are holding off at the moment they seem wary of provoking more instability in Israeli leadership in this moment of uncertainty. Historically, in the midst of any crisis, political leaders tend to see a boost in their popularity. And that is evident with the opposition leaders keeping aside their differences and joining hands to form the war cabinet. But at this moment, the talk is that Netanyahu will not be able to survive this crisis. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.